Good morning, everybody. I am extremely disappointed in Judge Reese's unprecedented ruling today. We think he is wrong on the law and have every reason to believe that on appeal we will be successful. Because this is a nation of laws, this is not a nation of men. This ruling undermines the very fundamental principle of our Constitution and it disrupts the separation of powers which goes back 200 years in the United States of America. This city has in good faith gone above and beyond the call of duty to resolve both of the issues with the Firefighters Union and the Pension Fund. We have sought to and successfully made legislative changes. I appointed a Blue Ribbon Commission that spent months coming up with alternatives and that were all rejected by the firefighters. We hired one of the best mediators in America and negotiated until late last night to try to resolve this issue. The union leadership has rejected at least five options that would have resolved both the pension and the longevity suits. Rather than working with all parties, they are now pursuing this scorched earth policy and this strategy that threatens to severely cripple this city's ability to deliver essential services to the residents and the taxpayers who depend on police, on fire, emergency medical services, street repairs, parks and recreation. What I keep trying to articulate clearly is that the stability and the sustainability of the pension system is in the best interest of the city's and the firefighters' interest. Make no mistake about it, individual firefighters do a great job. They're put in harm's way in a moment's notice. But this is not about them. This is about their pension fund, which is one of the most poorly designed and poorly managed pension systems in America. It's a fund that continues to cheat you, the taxpayers, in the end, we want to make the system sustainable for firefighters who are out there risking their lives and working hard every day. We want to resolve this matter in a way that protects the city's financial stability, public safety, and yes, that's vital services. We have a shared responsibility to make this right. This firefighter's pension system is one of the worst in the country. We are spending more on pensions than we are on the entire fire department and the firefighters themselves. Over the last 10 years, they have gambled and lost you, the taxpayers, money. Let me remind you about some of their bad investments that cost the taxpayers money. $15 million in a bankrupt hedge fund in the Cayman Islands. Multiple loans that they're in default of. An investment advisor who was sanctioned by the Security and Exchange Commission for bad practices. And the list goes on and on. And now, they want me to cut your services, like street repairs, to shut down Nord pools, or impose a massive tax increase. Well, let me be clear about this. Before I decimate our city's budget, before I stop the street repairs that we're making, stop filling potholes, turn off your street lights, before I shut down NARD, before I lay off firefighters and police and city employees, I am prepared to stay under house arrest for the next two years of my term. Because this is too important and too much is at stake for the city of New Orleans. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer a couple of questions. What, do you think, if you all plan on appealing, which you do, do you think the judge will enforce the house arrest while you're appealing this decision? Because that could take months or years. Well, let me say this. I don't know, but my wife is really happy about it. She called me and said she's been trying to get me to stay home on weekends for the past 23 years. She already sent me a honeydew list. <laughs> Was the, the latest offer your last and best offer, or is there still room to negotiate? We are all, well, we are always interested in negotiating in good faith. The judge kind of took a little bit of our bargaining position away today by saying, you're the, you're the only one that's got to move. We'll always talk in good faith. We always want to do it. But here's the point. In order to resolve this matter, it has to be done in a way that can sustain the budget over a long period of time and one that's, that structurally changes the pension system. The sheriff's consent decree, the police consent decree, the consent decree at Hano, the consent decree at the sewage and water board, all of these things play into whether or not the city council and I have the resources we need to do what the public says they want us to do. But let me be clear, this ruling today upsets the separation of powers that has been placed in this country for 200 years and gives unto the judiciary right, the authority and the right under this judge's ruling to, to put himself in the place of the executive branch or the legislative branch. We simply respectfully disagree that he has the authority to do that. Do, do you think? 
what is is there a magic number you you've thrown some numbers out the firefighters have thrown some numbers out they don't want to budge on the pension issue is it's there a, about, is there a magic number this is a this is not this is about being able to make sure that the city and the people of new orleans have the resources they need to have police protection fire protection streets and what we're trying to do is fix a problem that the judge admitted today started in 1990 that is not of our doing and we're trying to do this in a way that doesn't threaten the financial stability of the city. Essentially, though, what the judge wants us to do is throw all of that out of the window and give the first $150 million to the firefighters and everybody else in the city be damned. Because the cut, and you all know what this looks like because you saw us do it in the first six months that we're here, the $100 million cut that we imposed was draconian. And it required us to shut down government. On, on certain days, it required us to furlough city employees. It required us to do a whole host of things that I'm not, that I'm pretty certain uh, that the judge has not contemplated, notwithstanding the fact that from an empathetic tone from the bench, he, he said he knew what the mayor and the city council go through. That's the reason why the separation of document, doctrine powers uh, is in place. And uh, I think, unfortunately and respectfully, that he's legally wrong. That's what courts of appeals are for. And uh, we're certainly going to take this up to the Fourth Circuit and, if necessary, to the Supreme Court. All right, one more. Mayor, you said you, you are um, willing to continue negotiations. Are you confident that by, if the appellate courts don't intervene, that by Friday at 5 p.m. that you can come to? It takes, takes two sides to tango. And the firefighters have been unable and unwilling to do something that's reasonable and thoughtful. We are going to continue to do to make offers that have financial stability for the taxpayers because I will not be part of voluntarily, basically financially decimating this city after the last 10 years of one of the most miraculous recoveries in the United States of America. That does not make any sense. And it is the chief executive's responsibility and the appropriator's responsibility to balance all of those interests. That is why the Constitution gives us that authority and does not give it to a judge. And so we are going to have to test that principle because the judge today just upended about 200 years of jurisprudence. And uh, we're going to test it in the Fourth Circuit and the, and the Supreme Court. If after that we come back here, we may be having a different discussion. But uh, we believe the judge is legally wrong. The citizens have a right to be heard. The judge talked to, to me today, but he spoke to me as mayor of the city of New Orleans, and I represent the 385,000 people in the city. So basically he told the people of the city, step back and wait. I'm putting these guys in front of you, and if you can't get police service, if you can't get fire service, if you can't get your lights turned on, if you can't get your potholes filled, you know what? That's just the way it's going to be because I, judge, decide what should be done, even though that's not what you elected me to do. What is the reasonable dollar amount in your I'm, opinion? I'm not going to negotiate right now. It's not just about dollars. It's about structural changes so the system can be sustainable over time. That is, that is as important as the dollar amount. And by the way, the number keeps changing on the other side. Uh, and so it's a negotiation. It will go on, and we will continue to operate in good faith like we have from the beginning. The fact that, that we can be held in contempt for negotiating in good faith is another aberration uh, or app application of the law as well. And that's what we have lawyers for. That's what we have courts of appeals for. Judges are entitled to their opinions, right? But they're not entitled to change the law. Uh, and that's what we have courts of appeals for in the Supreme Court, and I am hoping uh, that if the law is read in the appropriate way and feel confident that when it is, that we will be victorious. Thank All you. right. Thank you all very much.